Hi, Steve from CCL. Today we've got a lineup of three gigabyte boards. They're all Z77 based boards with a lot of similar features, but they're also very different boards for very different applications. So we're going to take a look at what they've got in common, and then we're going to see what separates them from each other so we can see what different applications they'd be best suited to. We're going to be taking a look at the Z77N Wi-Fi, the Z77MX D3H, and the Z77X D3H. So they're all Z77 based chipsets, so that's the second and third gen Intel core processors, so your Sandy Bridge and your Ivy Bridge. So let's have a look at the features that they've all got in common, and then we can look at them individually and see what makes them different. So the standard feature that we've seen on a lot of Gigabyte boards is the Ultra Durable 4. One of the first features that you've got to see on a Gigabyte board for it to qualify for the Ultra Durable 4 is their humidity protection, which is a new method of weaving the glass fabric for the actual circuit board. So on a traditional motherboard that would be a cylindrical fibre which obviously if you sit a cylinder on top of a cylinder you get a nice gap around the edges. Whereas in the Gigabyte boards it's actually a flat fibre. Um, so if you sit something flat on top of something flat there's not much of a gap underneath for the humidity to get into. So that obviously gives you great protection against humidity and humidity penetrating through because there's less actual gaps for it to get into. The second feature that we've got to see on a Gigabyte board is the electrostatic protection, which basically means they use high electrostatic discharge resistant ICs. So the ICs are designed to have higher protection against electrostatic discharge, or ESD for short. So that basically means that when you're handling the board, it's actually safer and there is less chance that you'll be able to damage it with electrostatic. However, we do recommend that you still ground yourself or discharge any static prior to working on a board, but you should be a lot safer with the uh, new ICs that they've got on there. The third feature that we like to see is their power failure protection, which basically means these ICs which help prevent electrostatic discharge also help against anti-surge. So if you experience a sudden power outage for any reason, the motherboards are equipped to ensure that you won't be dealing with a fatal malfunction. That also incorporates their dual BIOS, so if for any reason your BIOS becomes corrupt due to a sudden power failure or surge, etc., it does have a secondary BIOS which it can either use to restore the original one or revert to entirely. High temperature protection is another feature needed for it to qualify for the Ultra Durable 4. Now this is achieved in two ways. Gigabyte use all solid Japanese made capacitors, which means the actual lifespan of the capacitor is a lot longer than your traditional ones. Obviously if you've ever had a board that suddenly failed and you notice one of the top of the capacitors is domed or it's actually started to leak, um, you shouldn't have that issue with the solid capacitors. They also use lower RDS MOSFETs, which basically means that over long periods of time and different usage they actually stay cooler for longer. So. Obviously we've covered all four things there that you need for the Ultra Durable 4. The second feature these boards all support is Gigabyte's Easy Smart Response Utility which allows end users to easily configure the Intel Smart Response technology on their board which allows up to a 60% increase in speed when using a solid state drive paired with a hard drive. So that's 60% increase when using a standard mechanical drive. The third feature that these boards all have is the 333 onboard acceleration which is Gigabyte's way of saying the board comes with USB 3.0 um, USB power times 3 and SATA 3, so 6 gigabit per second SATA on that. Now obviously USB 3 is kind of self-explanatory, it's the newer, faster universal serial bus technology. And um, We have USB power times 3, that basically means that it's putting out more power than a standard USB port. So if you've ever had a, an external hard drive that won't work when plugged in, it just spins up and clicks. Or it's got one of those leads that has two USB ports on, one's for additional power. You shouldn't need that with USB power times 3 because you're getting three times more power out of the USB port. So that should provide decent power for any external devices like optical drives and hard drives. The onboard SATA 3, again, pretty self-explanatory, it's SATA 6 gigabit per second, but what that allows you to do is look at the board, see that it's got the 333 onboard acceleration, and know that that's all the bases covered for SATA 3, USB 3, and additional power for your external drives. Another feature that we like to see on the Gigabyte boards is the on-off USB charge. So even if your PC is switched off, as long as it's connected to the mains, you can still charge your mobile phone, your iPad, your iPod, your iPhone etc um, you can all charge them by USB so you don't actually have to turn your machine on so if you're like me and you've got say for example one of these boards and you're using it as a media center you can still plug your phone in next to your TV have it charging even when everything's turned off so that's a nice little feature to see on there. All of the boards also support their 3D UEFI BIOS which is great for multiple reasons it's an easier BIOS to navigate it's more user friendly than the traditional BIOS um, it means they support most of the Windows 8 features such as Secure Boot, etc. And it also means you can have larger than 2 terabyte drives on your machine. Standard BIOSes are struggling at the moment with anything over 2 terabytes. There are some manufacturers' fixes to unlock 3 terabyte drives, for example. But natively, it's UEFI BIOSes that enable that feature. 
Another feature that we see on all of these boards is the Virtual MVP, which is a software virtualization solution that allows different graphics cards from different manufacturers to all work together to increase your frames per second. So in this instance, it can use the onboard discrete graphics to work alongside an AMD or NVIDIA based graphics card. So that increases your overall frames per second and obviously the performance of the actual game. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at each board individually, find out what features they've got that separate them from each other and which application they're probably going to be ideal for. So the first board we're going to be looking at is the Z77N Wi-Fi. This is a mini ITX, so super small form factor, but with it having the Z77 chips there, it packs a serious punch. So this is going to be ideally orientated towards either a HTPC media center or a portable gaming machine. So if you go to a lot of the LAN events, like the Multiplayer Insomnia one that we cover quite a lot, building a gaming system around one of these boards is going to give you something small, light, yet powerful. So let's have a look at this board and see what separates it from the rest. So as you can see, the Z77M Wi-Fi is a teeny tiny board. Now don't be fooled into thinking that because it's such a small form factor that you're going to lose any performance there. It is still the Z77 chipset, so it will still take your Ivy Bridge processors. Now the only drawback to having a board of this size is the reduced expandability, so obviously we only have the one PCI Express slot, but that is still a PCI Express 3.0 on a Time16 interface. So if you wanted to fit yourself a 7770 or a GTX 680 in there, providing the case that you've got will take it, this board will run it. We also only have two memory slots, but given the fact that you can now get memory in excess of 8GB, that's not going to be a problem. So what separates this board from the rest is, if I just flip it over, is given the fact that it has dual HDMI output, so if you wanted to connect this to two TVs and display two images simultaneously, you can. We've got DVI-I there as well, so if you want to connect it to a DVI-I monitor, you can do that. We have the dual Wi-Fi, so that's um, wireless N, TX and RX on there. We've got two gigabit ports, so if you want to set this up for teaming on LAN, you can do that if your network supports it. Or you can have one as an internet connection, one as a LAN connection, you can do whatever you want there. We also have the USB 3 ports, which are actually fused. Each individual one of these ports is fused. So if you were to have a device fail that blew your USB port, instead of it taking out this whole bank, it will just take out one of those USB ports. Now this feature is only available on the USB 3 ports, doesn't apply to the USB 2 ports. But overall, for a board of this form factor, you are getting a lot of bang for your buck. I mean, if I was to build a system to take to the Insomnia series, I would definitely build it around a board like this, if not this board itself. Because, to be honest, you're getting the same performance in such a small form factor, and I know that I would rather carry the Cooler Master Elite 120 to a LAN than carry a Cooler Master Cosmos S to a LAN. So that's where this board's really going to come into its own. Or, if you wanted to put it into one of the HTCP cases that we do, then this would make an ideal media centre slash gaming machine that can sit under your TV and take up little to no space. So onto the second board in our lineup, the Z77MX D3H. This is an M80X board, so it's not full-sized ATX, so it will go in some of our MIDI towers. So if you wanted to build a high-performance gaming system or a powerhouse workstation or something to that effect, then this board's going to be able to keep that in a nice small case, so you don't have to go for something like the Cosmos S or a half x or an Antec 1200, for example. Um, so yeah, it's a good all-rounder, decent size, plenty of expandability on it, given its size. But let's have a look at its exact features and see what separates it from the rest. So the first thing you notice when looking at the Z77MX D3H is it's quite a stubby looking board given its M80X form factor. Now despite that Gigabyte have made good use of the size and given us plenty of expandability on this board. So we've plenty of PCI Express ports there, these two in particular being PCI Express 3.0 so if you want to fit yourself some new graphics cards and go for an SLI or Crossfire setup you can. We've got plenty of serial ATA ports there, we've got SATA 3 6 gigabit per second and SATA 2s there. So plenty of, you know, you don't have to worry about if you run out of hard drive space and you've only got two SATA ports like you do on some boards, you've got plenty of expandability. We've also got four memory slots should you need that. Now if I flip the board around, you can see that we do actually lose some features by gaining some more expandability. So we've lost the Wi-Fi, for example, we've also only got a single gigabit Ethernet port, but we have gained some more in the sense of we have our display ports there if you're using an Intel CPU that supports the onboard graphics. Got USB 2 ports, plenty of USB ports on there in general. Now, this board supports Gigabyte's um, 3D Power BIOS, so that means that the CPU has a different power setup to the Mini ITX board, which should make this an alright overclocker if necessary. So, this kind of board is going to be orientated towards a home user who wants a system with a little bit of future proofing, um, should the word be used. Um, so you, you're generally going to get a good all-rounder, plenty of decent graphics, plenty of memory in there. You're going to build yourself a decent system. 
Um, it's not really orientated towards the powerhouse users, so it's not going to be a massive overclocker, but it is definitely, definitely a good all-rounder on the Z77 platform. So the Z77XD3H is the third and final board in our lineup, but similar to the MXD3H, um, it's orientated towards you know building a gaming system or if you're looking to build a video editing rig or a good all-round home PC. With the Z77 chipset and an ivory bridge on there, it's going to be a good all-rounder. But let's have a look at its features and see what separates it from the other two. So the Z77XD3H looks like an awesome board. We've got the black PCB and expansion slots contrasted with the blue metallic heat sinks that we've got there. Uh, but not just looks, we've got plenty of expandability. You can see that we've got USB 3 headers, we've got plenty of PCI Express and a PCI port thrown in for good measure. We've got 8 SATA ports there, so we've got the SATA, SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second, and the uh, SATA 2. We've got plenty of memory slots. We've even got an M SATA expansion port here, so if you wanted to get one of the little solid state drives, you can sit that in there. Um, now if I flip the board round, we can see that we've got plenty of USB 3 expandability on there as well. Um, so you've got the USB 2 ports up here for your keyboard and mice and everything else is USB 3. Uh, we have a HDMI port on the onboard graphics again um, in case you're using an Intel CPU that supports the onboard graphics. So this board, like I say, it's going to be orientated towards our overclockers and power users. Um, you are going to get a decent overclock out of this and if you're building a modded system or a gaming rig, this board's going to be ideal for it. So that sums up all three boards and their features. I think we've seen that Gigabyte have got a board for every application. So we've got the small form factor powerhouse, we've got the good all rounder with plenty of expandability, and we've got the powerhouse for the enthusiast users. So if you are looking at building on a Z77 chipset, then I'll probably recommend one of these three boards. If you don't know which board's going to best suit your application, then you can call our sales department on the number below and they'll be more than happy to help. But that pretty much sums up this video. So my name's Steve. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.